my sister Alicia and brother-in-law Lloyd asked me last week if I wanted to do an ultra marathon. Having no idea what it was, the only thing I knew was I was ready for a new challenge. So I said, yes. Next thing I know, I'm signing up to a 100 kilometer ultra marathon. I've never done a half or a full marathon. I love working out. My mindset is strong. I've conquered numerous of mountains around the world. A 100 kilometer run, now this one's a new one. A challenge, gotta keep strong. Would love some inspiration stories, please, to help me complete the guzzle to keep me strong during training. This was a post that I did on a page and these are some comments I got back. Roughly eight weeks out, best of luck. FYI, most people spend months or years training for a 100 kilometer ultra marathon. <laughs> Particularly one like the guzzler with under nine weeks to go, I wish you all the best. <laughs> I'd better start training, eh? <laughs> you clearly don't know any ultra runners then, laughy face. Oh, it's probably worthwhile mentioning that the original Guzzler 100 had a 30% dropout rate and it was run in July, a much cooler time of the year. It was brutal then and it's gonna be even more brutal in November. Okay. That was some of the comments on one of those posts that I did in a group. And I wanted to share that. And I also wanted to share another post. <laughs> I, for most of you watching this, know that I entered a 100 kilometer marathon. I'm going to tell you guys why. And I'm going to read a few more of these comments about what I got and what actually kept me going further. So then I did another post. <laughs> And it was more of like, I had already started training. It was an inspirational post about me running 21 kilometers. And I guess I'll share with you first. Like, so when I, um, why I signed up for the 100 kilometer marathon was because I was looking for a challenge. And it probably started about a year ago when I had done Mount Kilimanjaro, um, that I had had a moment in Mount Kilimanjaro, that was a breaking point for me. And it was that moment that I grew the most that I've ever grown in life. Like if you guys are into personal development, you know, you love reading, you love listening to podcasts, you love audio books, you just love YouTube videos, or you even talk or, or read quotes like that, like that's all great. But the real, real personal development is when you actually do physical activity. And I learned this from the amazing man, David Goggins, when I read his book, Can't Hurt Me, because what he was saying in Can't Hurt Me was when you put yourself through physical activity, that's where you conquer your mind. Because in the physical activity, you feel suffering and you feel pain and people change the most when they have suffering and pain. Like, think about it. Like, you guys, it, most of you on here have, you know, gone to the gym, you've done a workout, and how many times have you been at the gym and you're, you're doing the dumbbells, right? And you're lifting your dumbbells and you've got, like, five more to go, and like, five, four, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, oh, it's pain, it's pain, it's pain, and you can feel that pain, and your mind automatically wants to go, okay, stop now, stop now, now it's the time to give up. But you've got to push through that because every time you push through that, that's where you grow your mind. But the physical activity is where your mind's going to want you to check out and quit. So that was one thing I learned from David Goggins. And that's where I knew, okay, I've got to put myself through big physical activity if I really want to callous your mind. He says callous your mind to make yourself grow. So that was the main reason why I actually joined. But what kept me going? was these comments. Mm. Have, you got some, have you got some more? Oh, there's so many, oh. but like, <laughs> one, if, like, to, from my perspective, like, I come home one day and Mel's like, oh my God, like, this is just full on. And she's, she was upset, she's a bit distraught. Her, she said, my sister's removed herself out of the group because she literally can't deal with all the negativity and the hate. So to mm. get, and for those that know Mel's sister, she's pretty strong, like, she's mentally strong, right? And for her to remove herself out of the group because just so much hate, you could probably imagine what sort of comments would be in there, right? But eight weeks, one of the comments, eight weeks of training for one of the most elevated 100 kilometer ultra races in the country in heat seems very dangerous. 
Wish you all the best and hope you don't require SES or emergency services in the event. Dot, 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 dot. As in like, good luck to you, you idiot, right? But and this was eight weeks ago when we just started training. We had never done anything like this before. So imagine how we were feeling. We're like, what did we just sign up for? What, you know, these are people who have run these marathons before. They're talking all this stuff. What else have you got oh, in there, there's, there's one that I wanted, like, you guys could have, there's, there's a comment in here I'll try to get to, which is the Guzzler admin, right? Hey guys, just popping our heads up to give a gentle reminder of our group rules, particularly number two. There are lots of helpful comments, but one or two that could make Melissa's or others reading them feel nervous about posting in the future. This group is a supportive place for all guzzlers, so keep the helpful tips, encouragement, and genuine advice. I guarantee there's more than two unruling like, <laughs> really comments, otherwise a freaking admin would jump in there. But the, God, I, the godfather had to come and comment on some of these stuff. But this was just an inspirational post that I had done, you know, just hoping to just inspire, um, you know, people in the group that when we signed up for the 100 kilometers, I had the furthest I'd ever run was about 10 kilometers. And when I signed up for the 100 kilometers, I within three weeks, I'd run 21 kilometers, half a marathon. And the reason I'd run half a marathon is because 100 kilometers was the goal, right? I had set myself a big goal, which then stretched my mind further. So when I did this post, it was about showing people like set yourself a big goal so you can stretch yourself further. And there's like, there's a couple there that I just wanted to share because they really like some of them. Oh, I, lo I love that one. You, know, that you, you, could said. Have, you could even chuck it in the comments screen for a few. With no, because I don't want to, I don't want to put people's names. Yeah. But yeah, so anyways, there, there, is, there is a lot. I think you had said, oh, this one got me too. Someone was like, uh, it sounds like um, an MLL ML, ML pitch. I can't even say it. M MLM pitch. And then, um, and then people are just like, I think it's a good, uh, yeah, anyways, there's, there's heaps in here. But yeah, you're right. I'm, I, I'll stop there with those comments um, because I'm going to share what kept me going. So I guess like when I was saying to setting yourself a bigger goal, cause when I saw these comments, I was just like, okay, one, what's happening here? I'm like, they, people are probably projecting their own stuff because one, they're maybe a bit fearful that, that maybe they're worried for me. Maybe they're worried for me. And I think they might have come out of the kindness of their hearts. Or two, I also think maybe they were projecting because they had, what I found out later, most people hadn't actually signed up for 100 kilometers. They were doing 50 kilometers. Some people were like, oh, that's brave of you doing 100 kilometers when I, like, I'm only doing 50. Like, I, trust me, I have bitten enough more than, than what I've had. So I'm just warning you, like, this is going to be brutal. Um, so there was, like, those comments going on. So I was like, okay, cool. So they just must be doing 50 kilometers and then later on I that's what I did find out and then so that I sort of then I had make amazing people by the way other amazing people messaged me privately and was like you've got this I don't know why everyone in the group's not being you know not being encouraging like don't worry just do your thing and that's what I'm like yeah that's what I decided I'm gonna do and I was speaking to Reese about this and I just said you know one thing I've learned is like people have their own opinions, people have their own beliefs, and that's okay because everyone's entitled to their own beliefs and opinions, and it's just where they are right now in their moment of time, but I'm not going to borrow that, right? I'm not going to borrow their beliefs. I'm going to do what I believe in and what I want to do, and I'm just going to do my very best, my very best, and that very best was finishing the 100 kilometer marathon. I never once ever said to myself that I was gonna fail, that I was gonna quit. I knew I was going into that marathon to finish it. Injury, no injury, and I had injuries. <laughs> Did I have injuries? Oh, 
the whole thing was, uh, we'll get into that later. The whole thing, you're in a roll, babe. I'll let you keep going. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I guess like I wanted to get Reese in here too with me because he saw me go through all the training. So when we were going, when we were going through the training, you know, there was so many moments of time where I would get out of bed and just be like, Oh my God, like, do I have to go again? And this is the things that people don't see on the inside. Like they just go, rah, congratulations, you finished 100 kilometers. But you've got to train. Like you've got to train. Like yes, we only had 10 weeks to train. Eight weeks actually technically because two weeks is tapering. Tapering is, means not doing anything for two weeks. So it was like eight weeks of hardcore training. And we had the time, so we put in the time. We trained six days a week. I swam, I ran, and I did about probably about 100 kilometers a week. I'd get up with the days that I didn't want to do it, and I still did it. And then it was my feet. Like, I don't know if you guys saw, I had plantar fasci fasciitis. How do you say it? Plantar fasciitis. So every time I got out of bed, I was like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> That's full on. And yeah, and so when I actually went to go see the, uh, what are they called? The no, oh, podiatrist, the feet, the feet doctor, the feet doctor. When I went to go see the feet doctor, he looked at me and goes, you have an injury. And he's like, and you have an injury in both legs. And then I looked at him with my eyes, like I am doing this hundred kilometers. Oh, Jala's in here. Hey, beautiful. She was an amazing, amazing woman who sent me such an encouraging, such an encouraging message about the 100 kilometer. Thank you, beautiful. Um, seriously, that was just incredible. It was so inspiring. Anyway, so yeah, so he looked at me and he saw my eyes and he's just like, you know, because I said to him, I looked at him with his eyes and he's like, you're going to do this 100 kilometer, aren't you? I said, yes. He goes, okay. He goes, because what I was going to tell you, I'm like, I don't want to hear it. He's like, okay. I don't want to hear it. He goes, all right, well, we won't be able to, we won't be able to fix the injury, but we can manage the injury <laughs> as best as we can. So I did so much strapping, so much testing, changed my shoes, soles, all this jazz to just get through it. So let's actually get to like, well, I, what like, I want, what I just want to like on the back of that, right? You're going to constantly have right and Mel's alluded to it already you're going to constantly have people's opinions right you can either take them on board or not you can decide to pick that thought and go yep i'm going to believe that one or you know what screw that i'm going to use that as fuel to my fire to keep me going right so that's one mel used the comments to fuel her fire to keep her going and then two it's like what we live in we live in this tall poppy syndrome of mm -hmm. things where everyone is going to try to throw their own insecurities onto you that's not going to work you won't be able to do that you're crazy as if that's going to work let you know hey who are you to think you can achieve that why you so it doesn't matter what you do or where you are or it may even be your family right yeah. they're going to progress this stuff onto you you don't know so just be conscious of that um and then lastly, what you, were, yeah. what you were saying there is with the injury, right? And it's the same thing with life. You can decide to choose if this one little obstacle is going to take you out of the game or are you going to manage it, right? Is it going to, is it going to take you out of the game or are you going to manage it? It's the same with your stress levels. It's the same with your weight. It's the same with your environment. You've got the choice as to whether you want to manage it or whether you're just going to succumb to the external influences that you don't really have control over. So I just wanted to just tune in there. To and be this... like, there's some little other things that this lesson, hopefully you guys can take some, you know, some learnings in your yep. own life and go, hey, I've got control of what I want to choose as the thought to control my own thoughts, my own beliefs, right? Am I going to, am I going to take their own belief on and let that influence my thoughts, which is ultimately, as mm -hmm. we know, right? Your thoughts going to determine your actions, your actions going to determine your results, your results going to determine your life, right? So just that, and then just manage it. Like everyone's got stress. Everyone's got stuff in their life. Everyone's got people that you may spend time around that you don't probably want to spend as much time around as you do. Maybe it's your workplace. I don't know. Maybe it's your family, mm. right? But you just get to decide on do you want to manage yourself out of that or not? That's yeah. I'll just no, no. This is why I wanted you to come in here. <laughs> Thank you. And I love this because if the when I'm talking about the run, see if you can recognize anything that we can bring into like life yeah. because it is life Hello. it was like life that happened in like 24 hours it was just crammed into 24 hours so do do pull up on it and i love it um but you did say something there which reminded me about 
when I had all those comments happening. And I think you might have said it or something, you're like, use that as fuel, like use that as fuel to keep you going. And it wasn't so much necessary, like a particular person or a particular comment that was the fuel that kept me going. There wasn't anything like that where it was like this person, that person. What kept me going was I'm like, I wanted to show everyone on here, you know, everyone in life that the opinions of people will happen, but you've got to have your own belief and borrow, like don't borrow their belief if it's negative, borrow if it's positive, take the positive beliefs. And that's what I wanted. I was like, I'm doing this now. It's my why has changed. My why was to, you know, grow my mind. But now my why is to show people that you will get hate no matter what you do. Like, man, David Goggins says that even if you walk on water, someone will tell, still turn around and be like, yeah, he can walk on water, but probably because he can't swim. Like, there will always be hate but you've just got to believe in yourself and do you and the best that you can do because you can do it if you want to do it, if you want to do it. So yeah, so that is why, that was my new why and that's what kept me going every single way on the 100 kilometers, even the breaking points. <laughs> so let's talk about, let's talk about the 100 kilometers because there was some things, I know he's just like, I want him in here because he was the best support ever. And there was so many things along the 100 kilometers um, that I learned along the way. And so when I was running the 100, and I'm not going to talk about, you know, the 100 kilometer, um, what it was, what the trek was like, what, what it looked like, because Lloyd and Alicia did a beautiful live earlier this afternoon. They talked about the whole experience of the whole trek and what it was like. So watch their live and they will explain it. But I want to talk to you about the lessons that I learned and how we can actually use that in life. So one of the, the um, big lessons I learned actually was support, support. I didn't, you know, when I sign up for things, I'm, I've always been quite an individual person where I like to just do things on my own and, and, and for me. But I didn't realize, like even when I did the 100 kilometer, I didn't know there was such a thing as support crew or, you know, or people could come and watch until like the, the last couple of weeks. And I didn't understand the importance of it. I didn't actually put out there to people be like, hey, can you come watch? Or hey, can you come support? I never sent out any of that stuff to anyone because that wasn't something that in myself that I thought was important until now. <laughs> until now I learned the support. And I didn't learn that until our 57 kilometer mark. When I, it was 50 kilometers in and I was like, oh my God, 57 until our checkpoint. Reese is there. I'm gonna get emotional. <laughs> I'm like, Reese is there. The support crew is there. And like, I'm getting like, oh my God, I don't know why I'm crying. <laughs> and um, like, Matt and Donna were just incredible on 57 because they just got all the support crew for us. They had nurses on board, they had cooked us pasta. And then I, all I knew was that was there at 57. So when I got, like, I ran so fast because I'm like, I just want to see Reese. I just want to eat pasta. <laughs> and so when I got to 57, I was blown away because there was my whole family. Like, my mom had surprised me, my sister, my little, both my nieces, my brother-in-law, a whole of Lloyd's family was there. And then the whole tops were there and then my best friend Franny and Dave and she brought her little baby Lewis and I was just just so overwhelmed by the support and I was just like I, I actually Reese took me to the bathroom to help me change and I broke down crying because I think I was just so overwhelmed with the support and I just was like this is love like this is so this is love and as i ran away ran away because i had to <laughs> ryan was like hobbled away i i was running and i just for, for for kilometers and kilometers it was all i was thinking about was seeing 
everyone's faces when I arrived at 57 and I'll forever have that printed in my memory mm. of that support. And it was like that moment that I actually realized how important life is to have support, how important life is to have great quality quality relationships, quality people in your life. Because in moments when you're in your breaking point, in moments where you're doing the hardest things in life, when you're suffering, when you're struggling, that's when it's so important to know there are people there to help support you because that's what keeps you going. Right. And <laughs> coming from, and I know there's going to be a lot of, maybe not as many girls, I don't know, um, but I know with a lot of guys anyway, it's hard to ask for support. It's hard mm. to ask for things. It's hard to ask for help. It's hard to do all that. So while Bell was saying that, like that's what was in my head as one, how important support is and just be okay with asking for help. Right, it's not easy for all of us. And two is have that next, right? Have that next thing you're working towards. Mm. Have that next thing you're looking forward to. Let there be that excitement or that passion for it. Might be it may be in your it may be in your body, and you're looking to I don't know you're looking to see that definition in your leg or whatever it may be. Right, that next little goal. Because if you're always just looking at the top of the staircase, and you don't appreciate the first step. It's going to be a long fucking journey to the top. Right, to so appreciate those little steps and let that fuel your fire to get you to the next mel to the 50 she saw us at the 32 excited i can't wait to get back there for the 56 the 32 fueled her to the 56 she saw us at the 56 oh my god that was so cool you know excitement 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 fueled her to the 83 right same thing so it's like what in your life can you get excited about sooner rather than later Right, we've all of these mads, maybe it's to buy a house. Hey, save the first five grand, get excited about that, celebrate, right? Because I was talking to I was talking to someone else today and they're like, oh, I'm a hustler, I'm a motivator, I wanna get it done, I wanna go. Like, it's like, yeah, that's fantastic. But how many people do you know mm -hmm. of that are the most successful in the world, the happiest, I get goosebumps, and they go and kill themselves? Yeah. Right, like if we're gonna be real, that they're so, you would look at them and go, is Robin Williams, right? Mm -hmm. As an example, people loved him, wrote all this, done all that, and he, but then he killed himself, right? So my point being is just find the enjoyment in the little things along the way, in the 56 kilometers, in the definition in your leg, in the 100 bucks that you save, whatever it may be, to let that fuel your fire. So it was the support and it was the checkpoints, checkpoints yeah. to get you through life, right? Yeah, and that's, that's a really, really great point because now I'm like, if I... Looking at now, if we were doing the 100 kilometer and we had no support and no crew, it would have felt, oh my God, like it would have been hard. It would have been, well, it was already hard, but it just would have felt lonely. Right. It would have felt really, really lonely. And even just like there was other people in the race that, you know, mm. you could say they'd probably fitter or they may have looked fitter or that whatever, but they you know, they didn't have the support. They weren't there. Like these three were there together. They were there in the hard times. They were there in the good times. They were there holding each other through, right? And then there was other people that tried to do it solo. And you could probably think that maybe those other people were fitter, were whatever, but didn't finish the race because they didn't have the support. They got, they let their mind, right, check them out and say, oh, I can't do this. It's easy to, it's easy to give up. Right? Yeah. And we've all been there, right? There's all been times, but how cool is it when you've got that support community? You're five, right? We've talked about before. Who are the five people you spend the most time with, right? Mm -hmm. And let that be your let that be your influence. Let that be your motivator. Yeah. Let that be your support. So maybe just hey, a quick check on who is your five people. Like, yeah. And are they you know are they encouraging you or are they yeah? You? And you're one of my five, and Alicia and Lloyd. Right. And then I'm like looking at the run, and I'm like because I was with Alicia and Lloyd most of the time, like that kept me going that definitely kept me going and they were there too with me. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about another lesson. So that one lesson was support mm. that I learned. The second lesson Check actually, points. what's that? Support and checkpoint. Support. Yep. And then the other lesson that I learned was actually really focusing on the present moment. And there's a few reasons for that. Um, one, because every time I felt like I wasn't present, I had a little bit of a tumble and I tripped. So I was like, Ooh, Okay, nope, got to be present, got to focus here on these moments, so know what's in front of you. And I think that's really important too because I'm like, how much in life too, if we're not present, do we miss out on things? You know, do we actually skip things or fall over or do things? Like, So it was a present moment to focus on. But another thing too was what I had realized is... <laughs> So when we when we had um, we had we had to get to the eighty three 
kilometer mark, we had hit a checkpoint before, like a water fill up. And then the lady was like to us, we thought we were so close to 83 kilometers. And she was like to us, another 7.7 .7 to go. And I was just like, another 7.7 .7 kilometers to 83. And that 7.7 .7 kilometers felt like the longest 7.7 .7 kilometers of the whole whole thing we have done, the whole training, it just felt so, so long. And why it felt long was because one, what you focus on expands, right? So I was focusing on 7.7, .7, that is such a huge number, that's so much longer to go. And I was focusing on the 83 kilometer mark. I just wanted to get to 83. So it felt so far away that I actually forgot to just be like, what have you been doing this whole hundred kilometer? You've just been here in the moment, enjoying every moment. Didn't matter like how long each checkpoint was, you were going to get there. But I had this focus on the 83, 83, 83, got to get there, got to get there. I just want to get to 83 that it felt so long, like so long because I wasn't focusing on just, just enjoying the moment, just running, just what's that rock? What's that snake? What's that cane toad? What's that spider we saw them all like i was just like no 83 come on come on 83 come on come on come on when is it gonna come when is it coming <laughs> and that's yeah that was another lesson that i learned too is just like actually just be present and just enjoy the moment in the present moment rather than focusing so much in the future focus on that present moment i don't know if you wanted to add anything to that but no, I think it's it, you, the deeper you dive into that and your unconscious behaviors that you do on an every single day that you probably aren't even aware that you do, right? I think there was a study come out with COVID. It was how many times did people touch their face, right? A lot, a lot of times they didn't even know they're doing it. So mm. I just, the only thing that comes to my head is there is like, when you are, when you are present, pick up on the, pick up on the little things that you appreciate about other people, that you appreciate about other people. Mm -hmm. Pick up on the little things you appreciate about yourself. Pick up on the little things that you appreciate about where you live, about what you do, about how you look, right? Like all these little things, these little moments of gratitude. Before you go to bed, think of three things you've done well that day. Think of three things you're grateful for. Try to just think about something grateful for before you pick up your mobile phone in the morning. Maybe just try that, right? And be yeah. present about that for a little bit. And guys, if you, you know, I love that. Thank you. That's beautiful. I love you. Um, and if you're watching this live, because there's so many on here right now, please comment, what are you grateful for today? Because that's a great reminder. Like, comment below, what are you grateful for today? Okay, so I'm going to move on to another lesson that I learned. I think I'm going to have about four. So this is the third lesson. So the third lesson is what something I learned at the 95 kilometer mark. The 95 kilometer mark. It was so mean. We had about five kilometers to go and they chucked in one of the steepest hills I have ever seen. Higher than Mount Kilimanjaro. <laughs> no, it wasn't as high as that. But <laughs> it was very steep and it was mean to chuck on with 95 kilometers to go. But what had happened